Hey, it's me again. In this video, we're going to talk about too much calcium. I want to teach you something. I want to teach you the relationship between symptom and root cause. And when we're talking about all these symptoms of high calcium, what we don't want to get into is treating these all separately because then we're going around in circles. There is a huge relationship between too much calcium. And what I mean by too much calcium is I'm talking about calcium that is locked up in your body, that's unable to transport in the body. It's stuck there. Um, there's other names for too much calcium, like hypercalcemia in the blood. Um, but if you're over the age of 50 and you're female and you're taking calcium and you're taking calcium carbonate, you want to watch this video because calcium carbonate is basically limestone. You'd be better off chewing on the cement out there because it's just rocks. You'll end up having a lot of these problems because you're taking the wrong type of calcium and you're not taking the other factors to de deliver this calcium into the tissues. So if someone has too much calcium or too much unavailable calcium, they will get some bone pain. Uh, they'll have insomnia. Um, because especially of the head. So let's say you're exhausted and you need to sleep, but your head won't turn off. It's very active. It won't go to sleep. That means you have too much calcium. Uh, I'll talk about the remedies in a little bit, but that, that's one of the symptoms. Soft tissue calcification. Um, this calcium kind of starts plugging up all the soft tissues, like of the kidney as a kidney stone, the gallbladder as gallstones, arteries as placking, the eyes as cataracts, arthritis, bursitis, tendonitis, all the itises. And that's just because the calcium is not able to be mobilized. Then we get constipation. Constipation is one symptom of too much calcium. Why? Because calcium causes a contraction of the smooth muscle. That's why it causes bronchial spasm too of the lung or asthma symptoms because there's too much cal contraction and not enough relaxation. Um, excessive urination, that's one symptom as well. This could come from diabetes and other things, but too much calcium is one of the symptoms of um, too much, uh, excessive urination. Uh, then we have the um, cramps, like muscle cramps, especially at night uh, if your toes start bending like this and you flex them and it starts cramping, that's too much calcium. Anxiety. Yeah, anxiety is one of the symptoms. Arrhythmias, that's a big one. Um, high blood pressure. If you think about one of the treatments to high blood pressure, they use calcium channel blockers. Now, what do they mean by ch calcium channel blockers? All they're doing is they're blocking calcium because you got too much calcium. The opposing mineral to calcium is magnesium, and that is one of the best natural calcium channel blockers that you can get but why not just take something like that to mobilize the calcium? So we have to understand what is the root cause. And again, this could also be a symptom of these lacking of these other factors that, and that's what I'm going to talk about next. So how do you develop too much calcium? Number one, you become deficient in the fat soluble vitamins. That would be vitamin, specifically vitamin D, uh, vitamin K2, and vitamin F, which is basically the uh, essential fatty acids. That would be like fish oils. Because if you think about when people take fish oil, they usually take it for arrhythmias, high blood pressure, asthma, cramps, constipation, arthritis. They take these remedies, but they don't realize what they're doing is they're just mobilizing calcium to improve the symptoms. So vitamin D3, you could also end up in a situation, this is very rare, but you could take too much vitamin D and not enough of the other ones right here and end up with this problem too because vitamin D increases the absorption of calcium, but it only will increase it up into the blood. It doesn't push it into the tissue, so it can plug everything up. And that's why I always recommend if you're going to take calcium, always take vitamin D3 with it and K2. And I take 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3. Uh, and then I would take 100 micrograms of vitamin K2, and you might, it's not K1, so you're going to have to get the right one. K2 is quite amazing because it will clean up the calcium in the arteries, the calcification. It cleans up the calcium in the soft tissues. Vitamin K2, 
will even help these other symptoms, blood pressure and asthma, because it takes all this calcium and delivers it all the way into the tissues. And also the fish oils. Now, fish oils are really, really good. I love cod liver oil. But if you have any um, problems with your memory, I would recommend something called DHA. You can get that from the health store, DHA. That's a type of fish oil um, that is very high in a certain type of good fat that supports the brain. It's good for attention problems. It's good for um, fertility. It's good for the retina. Um, it's good for the heart, the skin. So that would be a good fat to take too. But a good olive oil would be very, very essential if you, if you want to protect yourself from too much calcium. So that's, that's what I recommend for the vitamins. But here's, here's the more likely problem that people have. They're taking these vitamins already, but they don't have enough bile from the gallbladder. Your gallbladder is right here, and it produces something called bile, B-I-L-E. Not bowel, but bile. Bile helps you break down fat. Specifically, fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, and F. So if you don't have a gallbladder, or you're bloated all the time, or you have constipation, which means you don't have enough bile, or you have right shoulder pain, those are all symptoms of a lack of bile, then go ahead and take some bile. And then you'll actually start absorbing these fat-soluble vitamins, and all of a sudden, things start really working. So we want to give the remedy, but make sure that you can absorb the remedy as well. Okay, so we got the gallbladder. Uh, and then lack of magnesium, that's a common thing because magnesium is the opposing mineral to calcium. So magnesium will help drive calcium down because they teeter-totter. So magnesium is not a bad thing to take to help these conditions as well. So if you really um, look at the big picture, calcium is influenced by vitamins, minerals, uh, and other things like pH. So a little bit of information is might be too da dangerous because you'll hear that, oh yeah, I've lost a bone and I need to take calcium, but you don't understand that there's other parts to this puzzle. Alkalinity, and this is another myth that people um, always talk about, that everyone is too acid and we need to alkalize everyone. Uh, that is a, a really big myth and you should watch the video on, alkal um, on pH on my blog because if you are under a lot of stress and you have a high level of stress hormone called cortisol from the adrenal, over time, that will make you very, very alkaline in the blood, yet your pH of your urine is too acid. So when I talk about pH, I'm not talking about your urine or your saliva. I'm talking about the blood. And it's very, very hard to detect that. But one way you can detect it is if you have a lot of arthritis and, cell, uh, and calcium problems. That's right. So. If your body is, especially your blood, is too alkaline, you won't be able to transport the calcium properly. So it kind of, and that, that would also apply to like if someone's getting older and their stomach acids are, are not as strong, like let's say they're losing their stomach acid, they can't absorb all this calcium. So it plugs everything up. And that's a very common cause as well. Or if you have a stressed out person, uh, your body starts getting alkaline, you start to helping all these symptoms because you can't absorb and transport the calcium because your pH is off. One of the simple remedies for this is apple cider vinegar, a teaspoon in a glass of water. I would do, you could probably put it in all of your water through the day as you drink it um, because it'll actually start to bring the pH down, more acidic, and start mobilizing the calcium out of the tissues. I mean, think about apple cider vinegar as a, a, a an ancient remedy for insomnia and even pain, arrhythmias, high blood pressure, cramps. Yeah, the reason why it works is because it mobilizes calcium. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.